Well, hello, good people. Today, I'm gonna show you the easiest way to get photorealistic images every time in focus. So I've got some examples here already queued up and I'm just gonna sift through a few of them here. This method is actually really simple to do. So first off, you wanna make sure your advanced tab is checked on. So we have our options here. Under styles, you can choose focus V2, focus enhance, sharp and photograph. Now, every now and then I might swap between cinematic and photograph, slightly different look. You could use them both at the same time, totally up to you. And then the third thing is the model. So for this particular setup, I'm using Juggernaut XL as the base model. And this is where the magic happens. You'll notice for my refiner, I've got Realistic Vision version six, and this is a Stable Diffusion 1.5 model. If we take a closer look at the description of the refiner, and it basically says here at 0.4 or 0.6 for anime models, it'll utilize the SD 1.5 models as the refiner. And for Excel refiners, you can set it to 0.8. Now, those of you that don't know, Natively Focus is mainly an SDXL platform. However, with this hack, in theory, you can get the results of a Stable Diffusion 1.5 model. And the reason why that's important is because you might think, why not just put the Stable Diffusion 1.5 model in the base model? Well, it doesn't work that way because the pipeline is an SDXL pipeline. So without getting into all the details, think of it as a hack to use SD 1.5 five models. Additionally, as an option, I've put in the SDXL offset LoRa with a weight of 0.5. Obviously, you can experiment with other LoRa's, but I find this setting works best. Now, what I'm going to do here is show you the differences. I'm going to uncheck random so that we have the same seed, and I'm going to process this image with this workflow. Then I'm going to generate the same seed with SDXL base and refiner and show you the differences. So here's the result of the current setting. And now I'm gonna switch it to the SDXL base and refiner. And we're gonna bump this up to 0.8 and we'll generate the same seed. And here's the result of this image. Now let's put them side by side. Two different looks, two different styles. You see with the base SDXL and refiner, it tends to naturally have a hyper-realistic look. But utilizing realistic vision as the refiner, it gives us more of a photorealistic look. As I show you some examples on the screen, one of the advantages of doing it this way is because if you were to generate a Stable Diffusion 1.5 model on say Automatic 1111 Comfy UI, you're limited to let's say 832 by 640 or vice versa. Anything higher, you're going to get deformed limbs, double heads, those types of things. So theoretically, it's like you're boring the SDXL pipeline, which enables you to do higher resolution images, but having the benefit of fine-tune SD 1.5 models. And I know a lot of you prefer SD 1.5 still, so this is a great way to utilize your favorite Stable Diffusion 1.5 models. Now, if you're new to all this, where you can get the models is on Civit AI. This is Realistic Vision version 6, which is actually still pretty new. And as you can see here, it says SD 1.5. This is another photorealistic model that works really well called Epic Photogasm. There's another one called Epic Realism that I quite like from the same developer. And all you would have to do is download these models and put them in your checkpoints folder like you would any of your other models. Now, of course, you can experiment with the base model. In this case, I'm going to use the Dream Shaper XL Turbo one. Now, as far as I know, if you put it on extreme speed, it's not going to work too well, so just leave it on speed. But so far, the Turbo models aren't exactly optimized yet, but I believe it will be soon. And for the refiner, we're going to use Epic Realism. We'll bump this back down to 4. Now, you can go up to 0 0.5, 0 0.6. It's really up to you. We'll leave the same Laura. Let's do four images this time. And by the way, in case you're wondering, my negative prompts are very minimal, ugly, deformed, text and watermark. You really don't need too much of it. And this also works great for half body and full body shots too. Very good results. Eyes look great. The teeth aren't as white as the previous setup, but still at least they're coherent and they're not crooked or anything. But, but I'm really loving the results. This smile is much nicer and the photorealism does come through very well, I would say. 
Although it works great for people, as you can see here, it does cars really well. Basically, photorealism in general, this method could pretty much tackle anything that I've found so far. And there's multiple combinations you can go with, different base models, different refiner models. Now, if you watched the previous video, you probably had a good laugh with me on how using face swap on my pictures turned out. Now, utilizing this method actually helped get my likeness a little bit closer, although it still doesn't look like me, but it's getting there. Uh, this looks like me maybe 10 years ago, much more muscular and buff, <laughs> but we're getting closer. I think if I can dial in the settings, it, it's going to look pretty close, but this one actually looks very much like me in my younger days. Uh, this one too but I'm definitely not that buff that's for sure <laughs> Now, if you happen to not see that video on face swapping and focus, make sure to check it out right here. Until the next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.